Well, you and I and a lot of people are going to cover the cost of last winter's storm for both OG&E and ONG. Today, the Corporation Commission approved a plan to help pay off spending overages of more than $1.4 billion incurred by Oklahoma Natural Gas. Officials say the plan will increase the average customer's gas bill by $7.82 a month for 25 years. In December, the Corporation Commission and OG&E settled on a plan for rate payers to pay back the estimated $760 million the company was out. But some are crying foul and saying the companies are not being transparent and customers are footing too much of the bill. Ren Skarkey joins us in studio with more. Jolene, I'm holding lawsuits and protests that will be heard in state Supreme Court. These say the way that state officials in OG&E have been asking customers to foot the bill is just not right. Oh, I don't think the rate payers should be on the hook for the incompetence of uh, officials that don't have the foresight to um, handle their business properly. Former state representative turned concerned customer Mike Reynolds talking about the multiple lawsuits and protests filed against the current plan worked out by the state legislature and the Corporation Commission for OG&E to pay for last February's winter storm. Thanks to the bills passed last April, the state essentially has helped back bonds that will allow customers to pay smaller amounts over a longer span of time. It's simply absurd. Under the current plan, OG&E says there was about $760 million extra paid out during the storm to keep the power on. According to Corporation Commission numbers, if that sum was spread out to customers, the average household would pay a one-time charge of more than $450. But with the bond plan, the average customer pays just over $2 a month, but for 28 years, which totals about $675. That's with interest, meaning if the bonds maintain their lowest possible interest rates, Oklahomans would be paying more than $300 million in just interest alone. The only people that we know for sure are benefiting are... Uh, the power companies, and the bond advisors. One of the protest files cites Minnesota's plan to pay out the amount over 27 months, not 28 years. Using that plan, each Oklahoma household would pay close to $17 more a bill for two and a quarter years, but that's with very little interest costs. They're going to be guaranteeing bonds for uh, a private company. Reynolds argues the bills passed by the state legislature are unconstitutional. The state cannot go into debt without a vote of the people. Reynolds and others are arguing if the $760 million spent by OG&E was done prudently, saying the companies knew ahead of time the cold was coming and should have bought ahead at regular market prices. Opponents say company spending records remaining confidential under law hides the truth. We really don't know exactly how much was paid. I think that's one of the problems with, the, uh, with what's going on right now. The provisions don't allow for us to know who's making the massive profits. We reached out to the power company. They issued a statement saying, in part, OG&E makes no profit on fuel cost and will only recover the direct cost of fuel for the February 2021 winter weather event. But Reynolds says activating the bonds stops any investigation into the energy buys made by OG&E. The accountability is completely hidden. The statute says that once it's determined that that uh, this, uh, this idea is approved, then it can't ever be questioned. Now, that in itself is unconstitutional language. Well, we reached out to the Corporation Commission for comment. They tell us the utility company buying information will be released after the bond plan is enacted. As far as the Supreme Court actions, they tell us they can't comment on pending litigation. We also called the Attorney General's office to see where they were with the investigation promised last spring into price gouging and market manipulation. They say it's ongoing and they can't comment. The protest scheduled to be heard at the state Supreme Court tomorrow morning.